It's time to build the battery because I thought I would because I'm pretty stuck at the minute because I've got to cut my casings down and I can't really do a lot until the bits have arrived so I've decided I'm going to do the battery. These are the cells, uh, 120 of them. These are nickel strips. This is one I've cut. As you can see it's all bent on the edges now that's something you don't want to do. Don't weld it like that. Flatten it off, get some scissors or something, and then get it on the table and just just flatten all the t flatten it off. Simple as that. And then you're left with that. Much better. So I'm going to do um, ten series and six parallel, and I'm going to have one on either side of the bike. So I've got. 10S6P there and 10S6P there. That's the only way I can do it. I can't fit it any other way. I've checked. I could put seven and five, seven, seven parallel, five parallel there, but then I'll have to run parallel um, uh, cabling across or a bus bar or something. It's just too bloody messy. It adds to the weight. I can get away with six and six, so that's what I'm going to do to make a 20S6P battery which makes it easier because I can do 10 series straight off do loads of rows of 10 and then I can join them all up at the end in parallel Does that makes sense good thanks so the first thing I'm going to do get something so as you can line these up I don't use tape I don't use glue I don't use anything I don't need to, I don't see the need any personally, I don't, you know. It adds to the weight and when you want to get them apart you've got to rip these apart, you've also got to rip the glue apart if anything goes wrong. All you need to do, um, if one cell in the pack goes faulty, in theory this is how it works, if one cell in the pack goes faulty all you need to do is cut the adjoining nickel strips and then you should be able to slide that one out and put a new one in in theory. If you've glued them and taped them and everything else you can't get them out. So if you get something to put them up against like this very very uh, interesting 3 kilowatt inverter which isn't uh, only, it's only 700 watt uh, anyway. Waste of bloody money that was. What I do is you put two up there you get your nickel strip. Don't worry, this is coated. It's non-conductive. You don't. It's, you're not going to be touching the terminals anyway. That like that. Can I zoom in a bit? Not much. Not like that. So what I do is, I start off and I put two spot welds on there, and then I put two spot welds on there to hold it into place and then I can go around the rest of them and I do them in twos, do another two, another two, another two, another two and then I can bring them all back in line and I can turn them over and then go across know what I mean? it's easy I'll do this and I'll come back you see I've just got two welds there just to hold it into place that ain't going anywhere and then what I'll do is Let's get a knife to point with, so as I can point, so as I can show you what I mean. And then I'll get, uh, I'll do, um, I'll do four across there, as close to the edge as you can without actually hitting the insulator, because that stuff smells when it starts burning, believe me. <laughs> so I'll do four across there, and purely because, obviously the point where the current flows is where the contact is, so if I just use two spot welds here I'm going to have to have 50 amp in what's that, two square millimetres which ain't going to work very well so the more welds you can get away with the better really so I'll put four across there and then I'll put another six across there another four across there making six so there's ten welds on there and then I'll put another four on there so that's like that so with this the current only has to flow across that distance there which is tape measure found it
which is 15 mil. So that 50 amps has to travel 15 millimeters. If you just spot weld it there, it has to travel all that distance, and you stand more of a chance of these nickel strips actually heating up. Incidentally, this is 0.2 mil nickel, um, and I'm running at what nine nine millisecond pulse, and it welds absolutely fine. Now another one as well. Make sure clean, clean these off with isopropyl alcohol or some degreasant of some kind that doesn't leave a residue after, obviously. Um, clean the top of the, the, the cells and also the, the, the nickel strip itself. Just give it a quick wipe and you'll have no problems. Well, I've had no problems. You might. But I don't give a shit. When you spot welding, make sure you make take as much metal away from here as possible. Uh, remove your ring because that will make sure that you can't shit yourself out of anything <laughs> so I've got 10 cells here and these are perfectly safe at the minute what you've got to be aware of is if I was to put a strip across there and believe me even the people who are so careful they still do it. Uh, that fused itself. If I can actually see it. That actually, all I did was placed it on top and it fused itself to the cells. And I knackered one of the cells. Completely knackered it. Uh, it went, it, obviously it started smoking immediately and then it's gone into internal, uh, it's an internal short now. So I've got one less cell. So I'm going to have to strip this battery down. Hey ho. So, <coughs> I get a positive and a negative. And then I get a positive and a negative. What I made the mistake was, I put it across there. I didn't even bloody think about it and, and I just put it, I put the nickel strip straight over the top. So I get a positive and a negative. Now I've got to do those two cells in the middle there. The way to check it is if you just when you're looking if you look down at the bottom you can see the strip across it um, and you know that those two are the ones that you've already done so if we have something like that where it makes it hard to figure out which one you've got to do I mean number one you could move those they move in a pair obviously those don't move in a pair so you know that you're going across those two there but I find that looking at the bottom at the nickel strip, you know what ones you've done on the other side. Yeah, I learnt the hard way, don't worry. I, mean, I, I don't make mistakes like that, not with electronics. I check it so many times, but I was just on overdrive and I just went bang and it just went up. So I'm going to do a strip across there. And I'm going to get that one and go on to there. And I'm going to do a strip across there. And then a strip across there. A strip across there. And then I'll come back and show you what I do with the final product. So I've got my cells here. And as you can see they're all rather floppy. <sighs> like something else you know. <laughs> yeah. Next thing I do. If you lie them flat. Like that. And then you push them all together, obviously they're going to be perfectly in line. So what I do is, when I can find the bloody end of this thing, where the hell is... Ah, there it is. I'll get a strip to the right length, which is about there. I'm going to have to go down here for this. Just stick it on one side. And then you get the other side. There you go, one pack. Now obviously I'm only doing this like this. Uh, look at that, even the lettering's in line. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing to do with OCD. Yeah, it is. Um, I'm only doing that purely because 
I've then got to get them all back together and I've got to make it into 6S, uh, 6P, sorry. There's a 10S pack and I'll need 6P. So if I, I'll just check the voltage on that, make sure it's all near enough. So I'm going to do the rest and then I'm going to come back and show you how to do them all in parallel, which is going to be interesting. I'm gonna, I can't stress the importance of cleaning these nickel strips uh, when you've cut them obviously. You see that piece of shit there? If you try and weld on or over that, if that was on the other side and you never noticed it and you weld on there, it'll crack. It makes a hell of a crack. So it's always best to make sure, clean both sides every single time. This thing isn't a race, it's a marathon. You've, you've really got to take your time with it and make sure that everything's perfect. Preparation is the key with these. So make sure everything is completely clean before you try and spot weld it because otherwise it, it ain't going to work properly. I can't quite explain how this battery is going to fit in here. This is how it's going to fit, obviously. It's not, it's going to be up against this, but I can't push it against this because of the cu the curved edges and it won't sit straight anyway. So I've put it in the middle. Um, I've laid it all out. Now these aren't exactly. How can I explain it? These cells, they're not well in here. They're not actually sitting like that. They're sort of they're sitting like that because there's just not enough width to actually, you know what I mean? Well, so I've laid them in here um, and I've put tape along this side here which you can see, just to hold it in place you can see that they're not perfectly lined up, there's a bit of a gap here but that's how they've got to go, plus which it'll give me some air circulation so what I'm going to do is uh, a wide angle. I've got to strip all that off and then I've got to start tabbing across to do the parallel. I'm about two thirds of the way through doing half of the first side of the first battery. I warn you folks, it ain't easy. Um, one tip. Um, isopropyl alcohol, well actually a couple of tips, isopropyl alcohol, um, after you've even welded, like this one's been welded before, you need to clean it off before, because there's oxidisation on there, you need to clean it off before you actually put a tab over it, see I'm doing my parallel lines now, now uh, the other tip is get a Dremel, for sharpening the tips because they do wear down quite quickly and the third tip as well and I can't stress this one enough is don't get complacent don't think I've done that, done that, done that, done that and the next thing you know you've bridged a positive to a negative this battery alone will do um, 24, 60, 80, 100, 120 amps so a piece of nickel like this it'll just disappear, believe me it'll just disappear and then you'll you'll set fire to something, burn your bloody fingers like I did yesterday um, so don't get complacent and if you want, if you're not sure about what to bridge, what to do get a piece of sacrificial wire and then if you think I don't know whether to do that just get it onto the terminal and the th if it sparks then you know damn well it ain't the right job You've either got the cells uh, are imbalanced um, or you're bridging a positive negative sort of thing. Instead of doing a parallel, you're doing a series, you know, and you've already done the series on the back. It's like those two. If I was to bridge those two there, I'm going to end up with fire. Just so you don't make the same mistake as me, there's fake or tin, uh, nickel plated tin and pure nickel. The first lot that I got I bought from Germany and it said nickel, um, nickel strip. I didn't realise that it was actually nickel plated tin and then the second one I got from the UK which was 100% pure nickel. 
I've always been, believe it or not, I've always been using nickel plated stuff on all my tests and absolutely everything, it's all been nickel plated, so all this is all nickel plated and I don't know what to do with it, I don't know whether to strip it off and start again or what.